morning, everyone. Welcome. And uh, uh, the we are celebrating, but I think that more than celebrating, I think we we can go over some of the highlights of these 20 years and see how the next 10 years can look like uh, uh, looking at some of the trends that are uh, uh, affecting uh, or affected by open source during the last few years. So of course uh, open source uh, was born uh, after free software. Uh, the reality is that it was born uh, based on free software. The, uh, we all know the issue that free as in English, uh, because you have the free as in freedom and free as in beer, uh, that is terrible uh, in terms of marketing, because you always have the issue of explaining uh, which free you are talking about. And uh, uh, so uh, what happened is that uh, Richard Stallman created free software, developed the concept of free software. It was uh, a mixture of technology and ethics and freedom and many things, which we all absolutely share and respect. Uh, unfortunately, it was not good for marketing, it was not good for uh, uh, to make free software, to, to have free software in enterprises. Uh, enterprises have their own uh, uh, buzzwords, they have their own uh, agenda, they have their own vocabulary, and free is not the right word for the corporations. So, uh, Bruce Perens, uh, together with a bunch of other people, uh, met in early uh, 1998, in Silicon Valley, and uh, based on the four main freedom, use, study, improve, share, and uh, on a number of other uh, rules that have been uh, uh, inserted, distilled in the open source definition, they are ten different rules, uh, created the concept of open source. And uh, according to what he has recently written, uh, open source was a kind of marketing campaign for free software. Was not anything different. Unfortunately, there has been uh, misunderstanding, and I think uh, we all should avoid these misunderstandings uh, uh, because uh, the uh, division between free software and open source, I still. Uh, have been, I, I'm still asked why you are a director of open source, that means that you are not for free software, which I think is just an idiot question. Uh, we are all for free software, we are for open source software. Open source is a precondition of free software. If you don't have the, 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 the code uh, on an open source, uh, you cannot basically have free software. So we have to overcome uh, the, uh, any kind of division we have to work together to make free and open source, or whatever you call it, but we know the principles, uh, a success uh, not only amongst developers, where it's definitely a success, and uh, the recent move of Microsoft from uh, uh, Linux as a cancer to we love Linux is just based on the fact that developers definitely prefer Linux uh, to other platforms for development and therefore to get developers you have to be in the open source environment because most of the most dynamic most smarter developers are using Linux and are not using the uh, I would say the operating system of the last decade which is Windows uh, by the way, people was, uh, he was telling me, I don't know when he codes, I never code, I don't write a single character of code. Uh, but I'm a Linux, although I'm 63, and uh, I got my degree in literature, believe it or not, in 1978, uh, I'm a Linux user. And when people ask me, oh, so you're old and, uh, and not a technical guy and you can use Linux, and I said, you just need a neuron connected to your hands to use Linux. So if you don't use Linux, it's, it's, a pro it's your problem, it's not my problem. Uh, it's, 
is more secure, it's smarter, it's configurable, I can do it whatever I want, uh, I can use it and interoperate with other people without any issue. So let's have a very fast look at what open source has been during the, the first two decades. So the first one, uh, of course the first one uh, was the decade of uh, uh, advocacy. Uh, it was the decade uh, where people were looking at open source software in a skeptical, and free software of course, in a skeptical way. They were uh, asking, uh, and I, I actually entered the open source environment in, during that decade, more or less. I've, I've been involved in open source for the last 15 years, uh, so most of the last two decades. The open source initiative uh, uh, started based on the fact that uh, the open source definition was a reference for open source licenses. Uh, and therefore, uh, it was easier having, uh, because if you think uh, the four freedoms are something that you understand uh, once uh, you have started, especially for the non-technical people, I can tell you what happened to me uh, when I discovered uh, OpenOffice, that was my entry point in, uh, in, uh, in a free software environment. I started using OpenOffice and uh, then I understood what the four freedom were after st having started to use the software. This is the typical uh, path of a non-technical guy. Uh, the open source definition is a lot easier to understand for non-technical people because uh, the four freedoms are mostly ethical and of course ethics is, is extremely important but when you think about business uh, uh, let's say that there are a few companies around that do business that are not totally ethical uh, but they might use op open source uh, as, as well so OSI has been the steward of licenses has uh, approved a number, a large number of licenses during the first 10 years. Also during the, the second 10 years, uh, the idea is not to do the same uh, over the next 10 years. There are enough open source licenses for everyone. Uh, you have all the flavors if you want the, if you want copyleft from strong to weak. You have all the flavors if you want uh, permissive from uh, PSD to Apache or whatever. So uh, let's uh, focus on some of these licenses, make them mainstream uh, and uh, uh, have uh, the consensus of companies on using licenses. Yesterday we have seen a guy from uh, Daimler that of course is more known uh, with the name, with the brand name of Mercedes. Uh, and uh, the reality that they, the, the software that they embed on, on their cars is Linux, uh, which is an example that I usually make when I'm speaking at conferences. I say, uh, would you, uh, when you press the brake pedal on your machine, do you really, do you still think that it it actions a pump or something like it was in the past. And people say, of course. And they say, no. It sends a command to Linux. And because it's Linux, uh, you can be sure that the wheel will stop. If it was Windows, hmm, OK, let's talk about the wall uh, where, when uh, you have crashed in. And people say, but why this? And I say, because that is solid and the other one is a joke. It's a joke used by billions of people, but it's a joke anyway. Uh, so the first decade, there were some uh, controversy, as you can see. Uh, the SCO uh, battle with IBM. The uh, Halloween documents by Microsoft and uh, although I am looking with a lot of interest to what Microsoft is doing we cannot, I, I personally 
probably is because I'm Italian, I'm old, I'm a marketing man, so a marketing man is a little bit bastard inside. So I will never forget that those documents were published because that is a significant communication in general and it's not enough a uh, single we love Linux to overcome uh, that kind of communication that lasted for 10 years. Then uh, let's talk it about it and let's understand how Microsoft can uh, become uh, a good open source uh, uh, community member. Uh, we are for freedom, of course, and therefore we must be coherent with our ideas so uh, everyone is free to become a good community member, but that is not the right way to, step, to start uh, being a community member. So the first... Uh, the first decade was a uh, crystallization of consensus around these, the licenses and uh, multilateral versus unilateral it's a little bit uh, obscure might be a little bit obscure but if you think that uh, open source licenses are multilateral open source licenses are uh, the effect of consensus while uh, pro proprietary licenses are unilateral. So it's just it's the consensus of a, comp of a single company. And of course, open source licenses created safe spaces for developers because if you use an open source license, you stick on open source license, you have a community and you start to have an ecosystem behind you. You have organizations like Free Software Foundation, OSI, that are uh, at least driving the idea and uh, uh, making, trying to make the idea more popular. Uh, you have other uh, organizations like uh, Software Freedom Conservancy. You have organizations like uh, Open Invention Network uh, that is uh, working on the side of uh, patents on uh, open source software. So we start to have an ecosystem that all together make it possible the development and not just the development but the growth of open source. Uh, so Eben Moglen, uh, uh, who is a very well known open source advocate and lawyer, says that licenses are a constitution for communities and if we think it, this is a very nice definition because uh, uh, being one of the founders of the LibreOffice uh, project, I can tell you we decided to use, uh, uh, we, we inherited LGPL uh, and we decided to move to MPL. And that was based on consensus and MPL today is really the constitution of our uh, community. Uh, we strongly feel uh, that MPL is protecting us uh, and uh, is allowing LibreOffice to flourish. So, open source license, we can say that open source licenses are the multilateral consensus of permissions and norms uh, for a community. And uh, I really like this definition. Uh, second decade, 2008, 2018, where we are now, broad enterprise adoption. Uh, of course, uh, when you become more popular, then you have software patent, patents to come and GPL enforcement and in some cases. So, uh, this is the decade where Microsoft went from uh, Linux is a cancer to, to we love Linux. Uh, open source uh, is the de facto market share leader on servers. Um, we can uh, look at different uh, de deployment of open source software, but it's rather clear that uh, on the cloud, uh, uh, open source software is uh, the absolute leader. And uh, there are also other areas where uh, uh, open source, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in a different flavors, is the leader. Uh, we can say that that for mobiles. Uh, of course, uh, 
uh, iPhones and Macintosh are uh, closed products, but the reality is that the base of the software, it's the roots of that software are on open source in any case. Uh, so, uh, and uh, talking about new ventures and new companies and new developments, uh, there is open source uh, in uh, most of the new software that is being developed. Even if you use uh, uh, proprietary software like Dropbox, for instance, uh, you will see somewhere based on open source software. So, uh, and that is uh, what makes me happy. Because uh, if I see that it's based on open source software, I trust it more than if it was based on uh, proprietary software. I'm not a developer, I cannot look into the code. But I know that there is someone doing that for me and helping to clean the code and make the code better because the code is open source. So the real value of open source is that you can innovate without needing to be the first. Uh, you can start where the others have stopped. And uh, again, uh, it's not I'm, of course, I'm making many examples related to LibreOffice because I've lived the project uh, for the last years. But you exactly, LibreOffice started where OpenOffice stopped. So today, LibreOffice is uh, several years ahead in terms of development. And the reason of this is that LibreOffice is, is an independent community-backed product while OpenOffice, companies wanted to make OpenOffice a non-independent, corporate-backed open source product. We should never forget that the situation of OpenOffice today is thanks to IBM Oracle. If the, if the product is uh, stuck nowhere, it's because IBM and Oracle uh, wanted to back it at first, and they abandoned the product because th there was no interest when they understood that the community was on the LibreOffice side. Uh, you stay in control of your own resources. You can influence the global ecosystem, and this is uh, the power of open source. We all together can bring, uh, can build a better ecosystem for open source software. But of course, we have to be all together. And uh, sometimes, uh, uh, as I don't have a, as a, again, I don't have a technical background. So, for for instance, the first time that I discovered Linux, I'm very curious. So the first time that I tried to install Linux was in 2002. I bought a Red Hat distribution at the time was kind of 15 uh, floppy disks. I installed it and uh, at the end when I relaunched the computer, the screen was black. So I called my friend that suggested me to install Red Hat and, and said, what's now? And he said, oh, you have to open the terminal. And I said, no way. My religion does not me allow to use the terminal. So my religion does not allow me to use Outlook and the terminal. And partially KDE. But KDE, I think, is a problem of myself as well, uh, because I, I cannot get the philosophy behind KDE. I'm on KDE advisory board, so this is hilarious, I know. Uh, but uh, I, I, I try to install KDE every now and then, and then after a couple of days say, no, no way, I cannot use it. Uh, but definitely my religion does not allow me to use Outlook and the terminal. And actually, the reason why I am involved in open source is the existence of Outlook. Outlook is the worst software ever developed by a quadruman. Uh, I don't say animal because I would offend more, more uh, genders. So quadrumans are only humans and monkeys. So I just offend humans and monkeys. But just conceiving Outlook is a sin by itself. 
And if you think that all the advantages of open source are derived from uh, software freedom. And new technologies are possible only with open source. Uh, talking again about Mercedes, uh, the fact that they are able to have a, a car that is software driven is because they can embed an operating system into a car and uh, have the operating system uh, manage the car. Uh, something similar is for networks today. You have software defined networks and most software defined networks are based on open source software. Then maybe you have someone that because of the license makes a proprietary version of the operating system but the reality is that the proprietary version of several network operating system are based on, were based originally on open source software. So let's see what can or might happen in, uh, in the future. Uh, open source uh, next 10 years, uh, we say assimilation and authenticity. Uh, let's talk about assimilation. So OSI as a membership or an affiliate program uh, if you look at the logos there, it's kind of a, the, the who's who of open source. If you are representing a, a not-for-profit, a community, a, an open source organization, and you're not affiliated to OSI, I strongly advise you to join because together we can really improve the ecosystem. Uh, when I talk as a OSI representative, I am backed by all these projects. And this gives me a strength when I discuss with people. Because I'm representing operating system, I'm representing uh, communities, projects, I'm representing softwares. I'm representing the best of the open source and the best of free software, of course. So that is extremely important. You are really invited to join. It's very easy. Uh, there is a module on the website. You just fill in. Uh, you will deal with Patrick Masson, our Gen Executive Director. And uh, uh, the first meeting uh, after Patrick has done the due diligence, uh, uh, you will uh, be approved by the board uh, and uh, we will uh, start doing things together. For instance, we have a few African organizations and uh, I'm proud to say that in some African communities uh, open source is making a dent thanks also to the combined effort of several uh, OSI affiliates. So what is going to, uh, to happen in the next 10 years? We'll change community styles. I think that we have to, be, to, to understand that we have to overcome the community boundaries uh, uh, and uh, work more together different communities. Uh, instead of starting to decide, I've recently at a, at a meeting I've seen a representative of Ubuntu, OpenSUSE and Fedora starting to discuss about the bits and bytes uh, in their distribution. I think that they were losing their time. Uh, they should talk on how together they can address more enterprises, more companies to have them uh, deploy open source uh, uh, software. Uh, and uh, so we looking at the, uh, the community styles, so you see we, we went from uh, the, the enthusiasts and advocates to professionals. In terms of single project companies, we went from really uh, closed and it was probably necessary at first to, to concentrate internally, but in the future we will have to uh, work together. License consolidation. Uh, don't count on OSI to approve many more licenses. 
we will probably start reducing them because there are too many. And uh, our, we, we also have rediscovered uh, software freedom. Uh, at first, uh, open source was seen as a kind of amoral methodology. You were against uh, the uh, private property. Today, op everyone understands that open source means sharing knowledge. And therefore, uh, sharing knowledge is the only way forward for the humanity, and this is the way forward for software. And uh, so uh, OSI is trying to, after having crystallized consensus on the licenses, and then against licenses, because during the second decade we have rejected more licenses than we have accepted, in the future, we would like to work more on communities and uh, working together. Working beyond the licenses uh, to make a real business ecosystem uh, around uh, free and open source software. Uh, I would say we have another 10 years. I can tell you that I will probably be there. I'm 63, so I said officially that I will uh, retire when I will be 76, so I will be there for the next 10 years, uh, if you accept me, of course. Uh, but the only way we can uh, do that is together. So join OSI. I'm at the same time an individual member and the representative of uh, to affiliate programs, uh, which are the Document Foundation and uh, the local Italian association, Associazione Libre Italia. Uh, we need the effort of everyone. Uh, we don't have as many organization, affiliate organization in Asia as we would like to have. And uh, happy birthday. <laughs>